Hey everyone, Fading Signal here again. This is a demo and overview for my new mod, Campsite, which is a complete camping system for Fallout 4. Camping is obviously one of those no-brainer mods everyone wants in a Bethesda game, myself included from day one. About a month ago, I set to work on this with the goal of making something simple and extremely lightweight, but interactive and fun to use without getting in the way of normal gameplay. Campsite adds several new items that can be crafted, carried, placed, positioned, and picked up anywhere in the wasteland. This includes brand new tents, sleeping bags, cloth walls, campfires, lanterns, chairs, cooking pots, a GPS beacon to track your camp, and even a new bed for dog meat with sleeping animations and new sounds. Each item has its own unique gameplay dynamics, new sounds, interactivity, and animations, and most of the items come in multiple colors with brand new hand-painted HD textures. The sleeping bag even has a zipper now. Immersive. There's more than meets the eye, so I'm going to cover the mod front to back in the next couple of minutes. I urge you to watch the whole thing so you can fully understand how it all works. It all starts when you pick up a new book called Adventures in Camping, which can be found inside the root cellar in Sanctuary. Keeping this book in your inventory will unlock all the extra color options for the items at the chem workstation, or if you're using armor and weapon keywords community resource, they'll be in the armor and weapon crafting workbench in the other category. This will also unlock all the items in the regular settlement workshop so you can set up fires, lanterns, tents, and sleeping bags for your settlers, which count as beds in the settlement count. Each item has a reasonable recipe so you don't have to scrounge too hard to make everything that you need. I also try to keep the weights somewhat realistic but easy on your overall carry weight. All items are pre-pended with camping kit to make them easy to find, and once the items are crafted and in your inventory, it's simply a matter of dropping them anywhere you'd like to set up camp. Each item will appear directly in front of the player when it's dropped. Activating the items will give you a context menu showing the default action, for example sleep, as well as various common actions to pick up the item and return it to your inventory, move it, or rotate it. The move and rotate functionality isn't as sophisticated as the workshop mode, of course, but it's enough to help you get adjusted when the ground isn't perfectly flat. When you're done, just pick up your items and off you go. Most items have their own special menu options and functionality, which I'll now cover one by one. Fire kits are craftable at the chem station or AWKCR armor workbench and are comprised of wood, cloth, and oil. Because the workshop mode can't be activated in the wild just yet, making these fire starting kits was the cleanest method. When a fire kit is dropped from your inventory, you'll get some nice new sounds and a fire will appear. Among the standard campsite object menu options, activating the fire will give you the option to extinguish it, which destroys the fire, or the option to relax. The relax option lets you choose three different idols for the player just for some extra fun. These work best in third person, so zoom out all the way and be patient while the animation starts and finishes. Like normal furniture, you can wait while in these idols, or simply press a key to stand up again. If you have a cooking pot in your inventory that you built at the crafting station, the fire menu will have an option to attach the pot to the fire. Fires only last four in-game hours, and if the fire goes out, the cooking pot will no longer function. If you have more fire kits in your inventory, all you need to do is activate the burned out fire and select the option to relight it. No need to start a whole new fire. The cooking pot can be picked up at any time via the menu, but will automatically go back into your inventory if you extinguish or destroy the fire. And last but not least, nearby NPCs and companions will randomly sit by the fire when they're sandboxing. Tents come in three flavors, a makeshift tent with a branch and a tarp over a single sleeping bag for those who like to rough it, and a pole tent with a single sleeping bag or alternate version with two sleeping bags. Each tent comes in seven colors with new HD textures, including light tan, black, blue, standard camo, desert camo, green, and red. A tent with two beds can be used by two NPCs at the same time. If you have a companion with you, they can be told to sleep in the tent. And if you have lovers embrace, your companion will sleep and wake up in the tent next to you. The menu options for the tent are straightforward, allowing you to sleep, pick up, move, and rotate. However, if you've crafted a camping kit lantern and it's present in your inventory, you'll see the option to attach the lantern to the tent. This will place it inside the tent, giving you some nice soft illumination. The lantern can be added and removed at any time and will go back into your inventory if you pack up the whole tent. Tents created in settlements via the workshop include this functionality by default without requiring an additional separate lantern. The good old trusty sleeping bag. These come in 10 different colors featuring HD textures and specular maps painted from scratch and look a little more like coated canvas or cloth than the plasticky vanilla textures. The default tan texture replaces the vanilla texture so all sleeping bags in the game will use this new texture. Colors include default tan, black, blue, standard camo, desert camo, 
green, gray, and special Nuka-Cola and Vault-Tec slash Vault Boy bags. There's an optional download to add a pillow, also with new textures, to the sleeping bags and tents, which will only affect the campsite sleeping bags. No pillows for those dirty raiders. The activation menu for the sleeping bag is very straightforward. Once again, you have sleep, pick up, move, and rotate. All of the items in campsite are persistent when they're placed, which means you can set up camp and leave for however long you'd like. To help you keep track of your base camp, you can create a GPS beacon that when placed will put a map marker on your Pip-Boy map under the miscellaneous quests. This marker goes away when the GPS beacon is picked up. Currently, only one map marker can exist at a time, so if you craft and drop another GPS beacon somewhere else, only that newly placed beacon will display in the map. I'm working on expanding this to allow multiple markers. I love dog meat and really wanted him to have a place in the campsite. You can now craft a new dog bed available in the standard seven colors. Dog meat can be told to use the bed and may even use the bed on his own, and when he does he will actually go to sleep. This bed utilizes an unused sleeping animation along with some other simple tricks to make him appear as if he's actually asleep. I even added some new snoring sounds you can hear if you get up close. Commanding him to move somewhere else or follow you will make him wake up and snap back into action. And as a bonus, when the dog bed is activated, you have the option to pet dog meat if he's close by. The player character has a 50% chance of saying either good dog or good boy or nothing at all in both male and female voices. Good dog. I thought this was a cute little touch that I'm probably going to turn into a separate mod. The lantern is a simple light source that can be placed anywhere or attached to tents as previously mentioned. It is a static mesh so you don't have to worry about it being knocked over. It stays lit forever so you don't have to worry about losing any light. It has the same basic activation menu to pick it up or reposition it, but because it's so small it's usually easier to just pick it up and drop it again. The last two items are really straightforward. First is the folding chair. This is just a simple metal chair you can set up to relax and wait in. And last up are the cloth walls. These are craftable in the standard seven colors and are really just embellishments to make your camp look and feel a little bit more sheltered. And that's it. Thanks for taking a look. I hope you enjoy it. I will be updating this with survival mode features, so stay tuned.